When Mercedes went to direct injection, they did a lot of good things, but unfortunately with that came some engineering choices that seemed to be hurting a lot of these engines in the long term and stopping them from really going the distance that they were designed to. Today we're going to talk about the ever-growing in popularity oil solenoid mod, what it does on these engines, who it's really for, how easy it is to do for yourself, and my experience over the last year of applying this mod to my very own car. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So what are the real issues that we're trying to resolve with this oil pump mod that everyone has been talking about lately? But it is pretty ubiquitous on all of these engines in this era of Mercedes. That could be M276, definitely the M278 by turbo that's in this motor, uh, in this car right here, or the M157 uh, in the AMGs, the bigger brother to this engine. And they all share tons of the same issues and kind of premature failures that we're all familiar with. That could be your cam adjusters failing, your uh, timing chain tensioner, failing prematurely, your camshafts failing prematurely and getting chewed up, your journals getting worn out, I mean, burnt up. I, it, there's some pretty scary stuff post 100,000 miles, especially in the turbo motors, but is also prevalent in the standard E350. And I've actually gone through a lot of this stuff firsthand. If you haven't or are new to this channel, haven't checked out those videos, I'll link them down in the description. My journey when I bought this car all the way up to engine replacement because I did have to replace the engine on this. That is unfortunately something that happened, but now I am far more educated on how to prevent these things and hopefully this mod will help that. But it's a wealth of information, so make sure to check those videos down below. So the overarching story in all of these part failures in these engines comes from poor lubrication and overheating, which is poor lubrication. So how can we combat this? And what is really the root cause of this? There was actually some great research by an independent guy in MB World. If you guys aren't familiar, it's a great forum. If you own any of these cars, I highly recommend you join and check them out. And I will link the forum post, the original forum post down below so you can check this out yourself. But he went through and did a ton of independent testing on exactly what is going on with the oil delivery system in these vehicles. He went so far as to retrofit and modify and attach his own oil pump so he can get his own readings outside of what the vehicle's saying. But what he was able to find is that when, especially when Mercedes uh, transitioned over to direct injection, they gave a lot of these motors, or pretty much all the ones I'm referring to, a two-stage oil pump. And what that means, instead of running at the full four bar of pressure, you're running at half of that or less at times. And I don't care what you say, running an engine lower than what it's recommended oil pressure is, is never going to be good. But we see from Mercedes themselves that this is strictly an efficiency element and has nothing to do with performance, has nothing to do with anything but efficiency to meet those regulatory standards. Now, there has been a bunch of people after this who have tried to disable it or change the settings within Zentry or within Star Diagnosis, uh, the dealer level software. If you want to learn more, link down in the description. It could do a ton of great stuff. Diagnosing your vehicle, changing some parameters is pretty cool. Definitely a must have on, a, on an older Mercedes like this. But after reading all the data and where all the data is being sent, we found that it was from one sensor located in the front of the engine right on the oil pump, the oil pump solenoid. And he found that unplugging it actually forces the diaphragm in that pump to run at full pressure. I'll try to put a diagram or something on screen to try to poorly replicate what I'm talking about. But uh, essentially when that diaphragm is open, that valve is open, it's running at half of the oil pressure. It's running at two bar. When it's closed, it's a smaller opening, therefore increasing the oil pressure while still maintaining the same volume. And unplugging the solenoid seems to put the pump, or at least the valve, into sort of a uh, emergency sort of situation where it runs at full pressure at all times because it doesn't know what you're doing with the engine. Now, one quick thing to note is that if you have a higher mile engine that maybe has done those 10,000 mile oil changes that Mercedes has recommended, you might find that that solenoid or that valve is either stuck open or stuck closed. That was an important note uh, that he mentioned uh, in the write-up. But over the life of the car, somehow, sometimes these do get stuck open or potentially stuck closed, which in my theory, in my head, is why some of these M278s go forever. They seem to go for 170 to 190,000 miles or they die under 130. So my theory is on these engines, that might have already frozen closed and given you the full oil pressure that it needs. It, because there's no engine light that goes off when you do this mod, there's no warning light that goes on, only a small silent code that I believe only Zentry can read, there's pretty much no way to know if it failed or not. So some owners that claim by X, Y, and Z, and this is why my engine lasted as long as it did, may have just been down to luck or maybe even poor oil changes. 
So through his independent testing and methodology, all of which I will leave down in the description, he found out something actually pretty interesting. Under 3000 RPM, these engines were producing about half of the oil pressure that they were really designed to. Specifically, they're meant to produce four bar. And under 3000 RPM, they only produced two or sometimes a little less. Now, I don't know about you, but anytime you run an engine lower than it should be on oil pressure, it's not a good time. I bet you'd probably pass out if you had half the blood pressure in your body right now as well. And that's another thing. Anyone who's driving an M276, an E350, an E550, an E400, uh, or an E63, how many times when you are just daily driving and not spirited driving, are you getting over 3000 RPM when you're driving around town? Probably not much. Next time you go out for a drive and you're not driving spiritedly and you're just cruising around running errands, see how often that happens. I can guarantee you it's pretty much nothing. And if it does, it's only for a split second or two when you're jumping on the highway maybe. So after all of this, the overarching story tends to be uh, through most of these cars, most of their lives, they haven't been getting the proper lubrication. And sure, it's probably enough but we're seeing top end failures like nobody's business on the M276 platform, the 278, the 157. They have top end failures like nobody's business. You see less of it on the M157, typically because it's driven harder. So it's typically over that 3000 RPM rev range for longer in its life if you were to take it by time, at least that's what you would hope for if you're buying an AMG. And even some of these M278s that are driven healthily, tend to last a little bit longer. And I guess that's why they say if you drive it, it'll last. And if you let it sit and you just put it around, it's not going to. So very, very interesting information and some key points to take away. So again, under 3000 RPM, you get no additional piston cooling. Under 3000 RPM, you do not get the additional proper oil pressure. So your top end is going to be starving, which is going to cause overheating in the pistons that you may not be able to actually measure because it is not in the oil temp, as well as in the top end where the camshafts are, hence camshaft failure, getting eaten up, lifters not getting filled the way they need to, so that way they're not going to be kind of as soft as they need to be on the camshaft. It's a whole laundry list of things and a domino effect of things that happen when you don't get that lubrication. And luckily doing this mod yourself is actually fairly simple. So simple, I'm just gonna tell you how to do it right now. Underneath your car on the driver's side, front of the engine, you'll find the oil pump. You'll find one plug getting plugged into that. It's underneath all the belts. That plug is your oil solenoid. Go ahead and unplug it, maybe cover up the other side with duct tape or electrical tape, zip tie it to a piece of the frame so it doesn't get in the way of the belt and you're good to go. If you need some more explanation, I will link to a video that goes into deeper detail uh, of it below, or I'll link it on screen. Um, but it is a very simple and easy process, and I was able to get it done on a set of slimline ramps for in about 15 minutes, maybe. Now, I know there's a lot of skepticism around a silver bullet that just kind of fixes the problems with no cons, and I get that. I was largely skeptical myself, but here's at least my experience. After about 20,000 miles of driving with this mod, I've noticed smoother startups, less mechanical noise on the top end, quicker to maintain lower revs after a cold start, so when you actually can put it into drive and drive it properly. I've also noticed a readiness at go. So basically when I'm driving around and I'm at a stoplight, I hit the gas, it feels ready to go instead of being a little slouchy before. And it wasn't something I realized until I did the mod. I've also noticed that the temperature does get up to temp quick. So in the winter time, it's getting a little cold out. The heat starts a little bit quicker. It gets up to temperature a little bit quicker as you start driving. All of these things are good, but there are a couple of negatives or a couple of drawbacks or at least considerations for you when you do this mod. So one, you will have a silent code uh, in your computer. So if you do scan and it is related to something else, you got to remember that that's, that's a non-issue code that you can kind of just ignore. It will raise your temperatures. Now I have the worst case scenario here. I have an engine with no split cooling with a tune and yet my temperatures are still well within factory, but you will typically see them rise around eight to 12 degrees. And that's really because you're doing extra cooling. The only thing I can think of is the extra cooling of the pistons is actually doing something and extracting that heat away from the metal, putting it into the oil and letting your cooling system do its job. So hotter oil is not a bad thing. It is simply doing its job. Make sure you use a good quality oil like Liquid Molly, maybe add some Ceratec in there, make sure your cooling system is fine and there's no leaks, and you will have absolutely no problems. And it runs smoother than it did before, it runs better than it did before, 
I, I can't say good enough things about this. So is that the silver bullet? Is that the golden goose? Is that the thing that's going to keep these engines running for as long as they realistically should? And I don't know, I hope so. I, it feels like a lot of the problems stem from this poor lubrication, so adding a solution like this seems to be a logical step. And with thousands of people trying this and no reported bad things happening yet, eh, I'm gonna take the gamble. But like always, I'm always looking for ways to make this thing run better, run smoother, and run longer for as cheap as possible. Speaking of which, this little brown box here could save you five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars in repairs down the line that you may not even know you might be subject to. So I'm gonna go over this in a new video. So definitely subscribe, like if you haven't already, uh, so you don't miss this one. This is actually a really, really easy one. So thirty dollar box could save you, can save you that much. That's, re that's return on investment right there. That's what I'm talking about. But thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you hanging in with me. Uh, we're almost at 2,000 subscribers. I appreciate it. I love it. I love these cars. Love the community. Join the W212 forum down in the description uh, on Facebook, out of all places, uh, if you are interested. I ain't gained nothing from it, but it is a wealth of information and a lot of great people there. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.